Good evening and welcome to the NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse Selection Show. I'm your host, Jeremiah Johnson. We are thrilled to bring you this program to reward 12 schools who will see their seasons continue with dreams of a championship. There are four predetermined region sites which will host first and second round games May 14th and 16th. The winners of those four regions will advance to the semifinals and national championships set for May 21st and 23rd at Kerr Stadium in Salem, Virginia. Adelphi is your defending champion. The Panthers won in 2019 by defeating Westchester 11-5. We will start in the Atlantic. East Stroudsburg is the host school, Eiler Martin Stadium, the venue. The number one seed comes with a bye into the second round. The Atlantic number one is Westchester. I mentioned finishing a runner-up to Adelphi in the 2019 National Championship. The Golden Rams were the top-ranked team in the most recent Atlantic Region rankings. Made that ranking look good during Sunday's Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Championship by defeating Seton Hill. This was their 23rd conference crown. 13-0, that record is impressive. Westchester, a two-time national champion, they have finished runner-up eight times. The two seed in the Atlantic is Seton Hill. They started the season winning their first 12 games despite dropping contests to Bloomsburg in the regular season finale and to Westchester. Seton Hill earns a spot in the field. Christy Cata, one of the best offensive players in the country, having scored 51 goals. The Griffins qualified for their first NCAA tournament in 2019, back for a second shot in 2021. Seton Hill will meet three seed East Stroudsburg at 10-3. Despite a loss to Westchester in the conference tournament semifinals, they are in the field. Fantastic news considering this three-team region will be played at Eiler Martin Stadium. In that game against Westchester, goalkeeper Tatiana Petaway became the Division II all-time goalkeeper minutes played leader. How about that? Recorded five saves, did move up to ninth all-time in Division II in career saves with 733. Three PSAC schools in the three-team Atlantic region. The East region now, where Roberts Wesleyan is the host, they are the top seed, earning the right to watch and wait for those first-round matches to complete. At 13-1, the Red Hawks are flying high after winning the East Coast Conference Championship for the first time in school history Saturday. Also the first NCAA appearance, leading to this mandate from Coach Kristen Paolini to celebrate the entire season, we kept pushing them to learn and focus on what is next. Right now, we want them to focus on having fun and celebrating together. Roberts Wesleyan will serve as the host for those first and second round games, as I mentioned. The two seed in the East is Mercy. Despite a hard-fought 10-9 loss to Roberts Wesleyan in the East Coast Conference Championship, Mercy College is in the field for the third time in school history. The Mavericks were well represented in the ECC individual awards as Michaela Brady was named Defensive Player of the Year. She ranks third in the country and caused turnovers per game. Emma Jacobson, Goalkeeper of the Year, and also Head Coach Don Sachs, Coach of the Year. Congratulations to Mercy College. They have a 12-2 record. They will face Bentley, who held on for a thrilling win against defending national champion Adelphi. Bentley goalie Eliza Bressler came up with a clutch save in the final minute to preserve the win. Sunday afternoon, the first ever Northeast 10 Conference title for the Falcons. Bressler was named tournament MVP. Julia Glavin recorded two goals and four assists to help turn a 4-2 halftime deficit into a 9-8 victory. This is Bentley's first NCAA appearance. What a day, what a weekend to be a Falcon. Halfway home, six schools have been recognized, six to go. Three of them in the Midwest region, where the number one seed is also the top-ranked team in the latest coaches poll. That would be UND. The Greyhounds were able to overcome a regular season loss to Lindenwood, knocked off the Lions 12-9 in the GLVC Championship. They are number one in the country in scoring defense, allowing just 4.53 goals per game. They are also number one in scoring offense with over 20 goals per game. That is quite a combination. UND also took five of the six major postseason GLVC honors including Cassidy King, the goalkeeper of the year. This is the third NCAA, NCAA appearance for UND. Lindenwood, Missouri is the host with games played at Harlan C. Hunter Stadium, and Lindenwood, Missouri is the two seed. They were ranked number one in that April 26th coaches poll after knocking off UND, then lost the rematch in that GLVC championship. 
Lindenwood is in and a national title contender. They've outscored opponents 244 to 101, averaging over 17 goals per game, eighth best mark in the nation. Aaron McGuire leads the team in goals and assists. Lindenwood will take on 14-1 Regis, Colorado Friday. The Rangers defeated Colorado Mesa in the Armac Tournament Championship. In that 15-6 victory, Kylie Peoples had four goals and two assists. Jessica Berg was named Defensive Player of the Week four times this season. A solid recent run for Regis, fourth consecutive NCAA tournament that has been held that will include Regis. Time now for the South Region. First and second round games will be played at the Barnett Athletic Complex. Florida Southern College is the host institution. The top seed is 12-1 Queens, North Carolina. This is the fourth NCAA appearance for the Royals. Queens features the second best scoring offense in the nation and the fourth largest scoring margin. Their passing is elite. Allie Blood and Kara Blanchard have tallied 43 and 30 assists respectively. Queens won its seventh consecutive South Atlantic Conference Championship by defeating Limestone 18-14 back on April 25th. Queens University of Charlotte is rested and ready for the NCAA tournament. Speaking of Limestone, there just might be a second round rematch. Limestone is in as the two seed. Quite a long run of consistency for the Saints who have now appeared in a conference championship 16 seasons in a row. Four Limestone players were voted all SAC first team, including Brittany Wimet, Wimet, who leads the team in goals and assists. Limestone has twice finished NCAA runner-up and is in the tournament for the 11th time in school history. They finished runner-up in 2011 and 2013. Congratulations to a two-seed in the South. That would be Limestone. Last but certainly not least, the three seed in the South region, Mount Olive. This matches Mount Olive's spot in the most recent South rankings. The Trojans are another school that is anxiously awaiting next week's tournament after winning the Conference Carolinas Championship back on April 25th against Belmont Abbey. Emily Prentice was the star in the title game for Mount Olive, scoring four goals and five assists. This quote from Heather Coppola says it all. I couldn't be more proud of the fight this team had. Everyone doubted our abilities coming into the season, but we knew what a special group we had. This is Mount Olive's first NCAA appearance. So there you have it. 12 schools will make up the 2021 NCAA Division II Women's Lacrosse Championship bracket. Winners from the four regions will be reseeded as they advance to Kerr Stadium in Salem, Virginia for the national semifinals and championship May 21st and 23rd. The championship will be co-hosted by the Mountain East Conference and the City of Salem. For more information about the Division II Women's Lacrosse Championship, go to NCAA.com. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am Jeremiah Johnson. Congratulations and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. If a champion can teach us anything, it's to stay hungry, to keep our resolve, and to prepare for what's next. So to the players in the college sports community who never stop believing, the end goal is in sight, the ultimate rally, a comeback for all ages, for the fans, the teams, and most importantly, the players. Let's bring on the next champion. We're ready.